Hey, Nightworms fans and audiences. Um, I am Sadie Mother Horror Hartman, and with me today is R.A. Busby. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. It was such an easy thing to set it up because so many people are East Coast, I feel like. Like, all of the Halloween people, all the horror people are on the East Coast, but we are West Coast, Best Coast. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah, we are celebrating this book, Corporate Body. Yay! <laughs> this is the last and sixth book in the um, My Dark Library series of novellas. And here they all are in all their glory. Oh, there we go. Them all. Um, I just want to talk for just a quick minute if you don't mind, about the series and how for collectors, um, it's really cool that they all have this individual um, cover that reflects what's going on on the inside, but they all have this like seamless branding. And I think the sixth book in the collection um, really ties everything together because your cover and actually, um, was it Taboo in Four Colors? was done by the same artist really it keeps escaping me here it is yeah so these two covers are done by the same artist this is Kristen with a uh, northwest reader um and then inside on the illustration the title page um right here we have artwork by ryan mills um and it's just really neat that everything came together exactly as I had envisioned. What did you think about, about your book? I just love it. It's, it, you know, that cover really pulls you in. And when you're sort of drawn into the, the interior, you get that, uh, you get that interior artwork of, uh, from, you know, from your perspective of lying on yeah. the bed with these doctors. I just know, I just think it's such a wonderful just introduction to the book. And I'm amazed at the cover artwork and interior work of all of the My Dark Library series, they're also unique and beautiful, just beautiful work. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm so proud of you guys. Like, I, it's interesting, like, I did want to pick up, like, a bunch of different subgenres, um, but I wasn't sure if I was going to get that. Like, I just wasn't, I, that was what I was hoping for. Um, but, you know, if everything was kind of falling under, you know, Haunted House or some certain trope, that was, fine, but I was hoping to have a good cross-section of what the horror industry has to offer, and we lucked out. We got apocalyptic, we got gothic, we got um, psychological, we have ghosts, and then yours, of course, is body horror. Um, so I definitely wanted to ask you about your experience with body horror, because you for me, are my body horror queen. Like, <laughs> you have wigged me out more than any <laughs> other person. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, <laughs> yes, it's totally a compliment. Oh, thank you so much. I, you know, it's, I, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about that, about why I'm, why I'm drawn to body horror more than almost anything else. And I, I kept coming back to the same reason, which is that it's, because we have bodies and they are so identified with us or other people identify us with them. And that's not always a match um, for many, many people. And then the other thing too, is that you can't always rely on them. Even if you are generally in, in, in uh, you know, privileged enough to be, ha uh, have good health or, you know, good circumstances. Nevertheless, it's, Kind of like driving in a, uh, it's kind of like being a passenger on the plane where the captain may or may not be drunk and you just don't know what's going to happen and yeah. you're not in control. Yeah, that's so true. Especially I'm noticing it now as I get older, I had kind of like an existential moment in the car while my husband and I were driving because he's going to be 50 um, in January. And I, and then he's like, oh yeah, and you're, you're just a few years behind me. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> 50. All right. Yeah. It's like, I've reached that halfway mark or whatever. And, well, and 
Yeah, go ahead. No, 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 please. No, I just felt like this is when your body starts betraying you or something, you know, it's like all these little aches and pains and things that you, you used to just kind of take for granted. Right. Yeah. And if you, you know, and if you don't attend to it, that, you know, the time in which you could do anything about it is, is remarkably shorter too, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I referred back to different ways that you've scared me, I will tell people the first time I read your work, I think it was the first time. Um, I can't really remember between the two, but there was one about holes in <laughs> an all women anthology. And what what was the title of that one? Do you remember? It was literally holes. And holes. It was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was the Candisha Press. And I it was partly inspired by um Partly inspired by the pandemic and also because my sometime earlier, my my bathroom had needed to be reconstructed for uh, for plumbing reasons, which was so much fun. Ugh, um, yeah. And it's sort of like, you know, you get to peer beyond the surfaces of this of your bathroom and see, wow, there's just weird stuff going on. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. So sort of put those two things together and then when the pandemic hit it's like oh, okay yeah yeah these two things can and do go together so yeah that was a really unsettling story I mean just somebody who deals with like phobias of like holes and things inside of holes and like symmetry in nature I don't really know how to describe it but like if you turn over like a, a fern leaf and it has those little octopus looking spore like circles and they're all like in order oh it really like makes me gag and there's something about the way that you describe those things <laughs> um, it's also really prevalent in this book like I just want to tell people like there's things that you can discover on your body and you just like don't want to have it described to you in, in such like a visceral way um do you so are you like somewhat fascinated by like medical body type things or what tell me more about that well I, I think a lot, uh, I, you know, partly it was being um, really accident prone as a child. And so by the time that I was 12, I probably, I think I'd had stitches many times, broken, broken my arm wildly so that it was like the Picasso two elbow. Oh, yeah. Very terrible. And then, you know, going through, going through pregnancy later, one, uh, one of which was, you know, both of which ended up being medicalized and this second one, especially. And um, I'll, I'll never forget um, coming out of ha having a C-section. And I, I, is it okay if I discuss like, if oh, for I'm, sure. Because oh, I don't yeah. want to be upsetting anybody with trigger, uh, trigger warnings if you have tocophobia. Okay, and, yeah trigger warnings yeah okay go for it so I, I get up after having my c-section and I go into the shower and I and I look down and not only have they have they put me in the most outrageous pair of underwear that you have ever seen they're yeah. literally great fishnet yeah and so it's sort of like this virgin vixen thing and it's like I've never felt like less like either one of those two things and I look down at my at my stomach and they have literally stapled me together. Oh, sta oh yeah. <laughs> like staples. Yes. And I thought, my God, I'm I my, my my I'm being held together like like Frankenstein's monster. And you know, yeah. with my stomach is blown tulip out. And that was horrifying. And in many ways, you know, sort of these traumatic hospitalization moments, I, I think really carve out this uh, this space in your brain and horror lets you explore that uh, explore that space for better yeah and as a reader too I mean I'm really glad that horror writers um decide that they want to explore something that's been going on in their mind because as a reader um I mean sometimes I have ventured into that space like thinking about it but oftentimes it's something that the writer is challenging me to think about that I'd rather not like in the story of corporate body 
you have this young person who is tempted um, to make money by undergoing like experimental um, treatment, which we've all heard about, you know, and I'm sure there's people out there who are down and out and have thought about like, this is a quick way to make some money. Um, but it's probably not the best idea. Like, it's just, it's scary, you know, it's scary to take these pills or to do this experiment. Like, have you had any experiment, like experience with that or? A big part of, uh, of Nick's uh, experience is based on personal experience in mm -hmm. Like uh, when I was in uh, when I was in college, and and again, I'm not trying to, um, I'm not trying to make it sound like you know, oh poor pitiful me, but I was on pretty short commons, um, and uh, for and my and my parents had forbidden me to get a job, which made me on shorter commons, and pretty soon I found that one of the best ways that you could that I could supplement my really non-existent income was by donating plasma yeah just pretty much just like he's describing and yeah. and participate pretty much in and participating in whatever would would you know whatever could pay you in drug studies and psychological studies were certainly part of university oh. experiences and um so nothing you know luckily nothing is drastic as yeah. as what he do, but uh, <laughs> thank goodness but there's a whole community of, uh, of, uh, of folks out there who help each other out, um, you know, and, you know, websites devoted to, you know, how to be, um, how to be a drug study participant. And I drew on a lot of that information for writing this. And, um, and uh, it, it was extremely informative, uh, supplementing both what I knew and with uh, specifics for what these other folks do. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure in most circumstances, it's totally, you know, legit and, you know, safe. Um, I mean, there's got to be ways, like when you're watching like a commercial for some kind of like new drug or whatever, they always are saying like 10 out of 10 people experience this thing or the side effects may be blah, blah, blah. And it's always because somebody volunteered to take to be first, you know, I mean, mm -hmm we all rely on drugs that have been tested on somebody, <laughs> obviously. Well, and if they're not tested on, on somebody, they'll be tested on everybody. Um, oh, true. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm, believe me, I'm very glad that, you know, that, uh, that, the, that the drugs that we, that we do take or that our children take um, have passed through some kind of testing phase. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, quite a lot of that was, was based on, uh, on research, including, um, to, you know, not to be too spoilery, but there's, so I'll try to be a little bit vague. Yeah. Uh, it's at one point, a character talks about, um, trying to extend, uh, and uh, extend human life by, uh, by preventing degradation from cellular replica, uh, uh, replication. That's also based on, on some genuine research as well that, being good that was conducted and then they I think the NIH cut off funding for it oh interesting yeah do you so you must do like a little bit of a deep dive and and did so for this book so that you could have that information to rely on well you know you, you start thinking you know if if trying to get uh I was going to say trying to get pregnant with a story and that's kind of like how it is in some ways um at least with me, I don't know how other uh, what other writers' processes are, but I start, you know, just reading and opening up my mind to the internet rabbit holes, as it were. Mm. Uh, and one of the the ones that I fell, and I usually start with what squicks me out, and so naturally I find myself on the YouTube page for bot flies. As oh, oh no. <laughs> Okay, I've done that it. too. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. Horrifying, horrifying. And and so from there to move away, <laughs> I, oh. I, I started doing research on planaria. Um, and then from there found um, and if you also want to squick yourself out too, so you know, again, trigger warning for insectophobes. Um I've, I found a fascinating documentary on parasitoid wasps. And 
one podcast I listened to mentioned that that was that learning about parasitoid wasps made Charles Darwin stop believing in the idea of a benevolent God. And oh. I thought, wow, that's something so. That is really powerful. Yeah, and that and parasitoid wasps work pretty much the same way I that I describe in the book, where they take over this caterpillar and just it out of it and yeah I mean there so I'm originally from California um and we have oak trees everywhere mm -hmm. and in an oak tree there's always these like they're hard to explain maybe you have seen them but they're like a a ball like a charcoal colored ball and it's very lightweight and they'll fall out of the tree and what are they called are they called galls? Yeah, when you open them, they're kind of like white and airy. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think I've seen them. I'm not super familiar because I grew up in Arizona. So we, so just trees are unusual. Yeah, and I always, we would collect them. My sisters and I would collect these little balls yeah. uh, because they were just fun. And like, almost like, um, well, it's too hard to describe, but it's almost like a styrofoam type of material on the inside, natural, obviously. But my dad told me that that is what happens when like wasps like get inside of those things <laughs> and lay their like put a, a like you were saying, like a, a, a species of like a caterpillar or something like inside of it and then lays eggs <laughs> inside of it. And then the little things like crawl out of it. And that's what all the little there were some little holes on the outside and we never fucking touch those things <laughs> ever again. It's like, okay, now that I know, I will never touch that again. And it's funny because as grossed out as I get about those things, I'm also like freakishly drawn and fascinated by like watching bug documentaries and stuff. Like my kids are really into it too. So we would just binge those. Do you, so do you, what do you think about like body, where do you get most of your body horror inspiration from like news articles or where's it coming from? Honestly, honestly, the natural world, I, I know that that sounds kind of like a cop out, but it's really um, the, I don't know if we can think of things that are more horrifying. than what we I know up. it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Truth is stranger than fiction, right? It really, it really is. And it's, it's fascinating. Um, it, especially with, especially with insects and, um, we're, which we don't, we're, at least speaking, speaking personally, we're not as familiar with how insects go about reproducing themselves as we are with, with mammals. And, you, you know, I get, I get it. You do what you got to do to survive and make it through the day. But some of those ways are horrifying. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I just even our own human bodies. I mean, and like you said, we're kind of just a passenger, like we're not in charge of what's going on or what's happening with our body, you know, to a degree, like we can exercise, we can do certain things, we can take ourselves to the doctor and like, fix a situation or whatever. But I mean, our bodies will surprise us. And like in your book, I don't know if I could handle some of the stuff that was happening to this guy. I mean, like, just to discover things on your own body that you're not even sure what's going on. That's terrifying. It's terrifying. It, it really, it really is. And I think if any, you know, um, and I, I think that a lot of us have been through situations where, where our body has done something and, and that's something yeah. can be, it can be, you know, it can be as minor as a pimple. It can be as major right is, you know, discovering um, that that suspicious mole is a way more suspicious than you thought it was, or any number of things that are far more serious even. Um, and, it, you know, again, it's something that we don't completely have control over. And um, in this, uh, this other story that I wrote of, also for Kadisha, uh, was... Um, in in it, the the central character retouches photographs. Yeah, and she has a flashback to a conversation with her mother, and is frustrated um, with 
her changing body as an adolescent and her mother tells her to stop complaining and that she's way better off than a lot of a lot of people and that she doesn't really have anything to complain about um and she says well doesn't that make it even worse for them and her mother just says you know shakes her head and she says why can't our bodies just do what we want them to oh. and i think that that's a i think that that's a sentiment that a lot of people a lot of people have experienced yeah. once or twice i know i have had like like just even a manual like we we get we get you know, a manual for literally everything that we buy at the store, you know, and then our own bodies, like people have studied them and there are things we can learn about our bodies, but there are like just mysterious things going on, like inside of our bodies, you know, even my own daughter who has struggled with like just things going on and you just don't get any answers. And it's just, it's so frustrating, you know? So it's, it's, it's comforting that there are writers out there who tell stories that we can see ourselves in and relate to and feel like, Hey, yeah, you know, I'm not the first person who has thought this, like there's someone else out there in the world who created a whole story revolving around this thing that I've been worried about or scared about, or, you know, had a nightmare about. And it's, it is comforting as weird as that sounds. Horror is very, cathartic especially for a worry wart like me <laughs> well you know it's oddly and oddly enough because i was thinking about you know the, the the classic question you know sort of what draws you to horror and i kept thinking that it's because it reassuringly tells the truth or at least tell the truth that often we don't want to hear but it's reassuring to have it out and have it told um that's really well Terrifying. It's like, well, at least it's out there. At least other people um, know what I'm talking about. I'm not alone. Yeah, and, and yeah that is that's... very reassuring. Yeah, I mean, your other story that I was referring to also is a story that you wrote called Bits, and that was for um, Domain Publishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was one of those short, sharp shocks, uh, which I highly recommend. If, <laughs> if there are horror fans out there who are just looking for something to just, you know, read while you're waiting at the doctor's office <laughs> or, um, you know, just to kill some time between meetings or whatever, um, they're very quick. They're very short and they're all very good. I've read, I don't know, maybe like 15, almost 20 of them so far. Um, but you wrote one called bits and it, I related to it so much because I had used to have nightmares about my teeth falling out when I was pregnant. <laughs> Did you too? So I, tell me about that. Oh God. Well, first of all, yes, yes. My, t I, I've had uh, not only my teeth constantly, which is horrifying, but I used to have contact lenses and I stopped wearing them because of the persistent dream that I had taken out my eye oh. instead of my contact, you know, like yeah. you sweep your, your fingers along your eyeball and that I just, I kept having too many, uh, too many horrible imaginings of, you know, of, of, of that. And um, Bits was actually my first published story so you know so thank you short sharp sharp socks. oh it's so good i want everyone to read it but it started because i had gone to this um this week-long conference that was being held at a an elementary school and i haven't been to an element inside an elementary school since you know i was four you know three feet tall or whatever and it was it was horrifying i i found the, in in a way that I find it hard to explain because obviously as an elementary school it's meant to be welcoming and cheery and um and fun but at the same and those things were definitely there but at the same time there was also this level of control and regulation that oh. I found mm -hmm. oppressive and scary and at one point I go into the bathroom which is the you know for the, for uh, for teachers and stuff yeah. And, and first of all, this is the most um, this is the most decorated bathroom where to deny its basic function as a bathroom that I've, I've seen in a long time. <laughs> yeah. 
we have fake plants. We have little wicker things. Like you've just sort of stepped somehow into somebody's sun porch with no sun. Yeah. And, and in every single one of the stalls, there are multiple air fresheners, poopery, um, and this this massive and, and fourteen soaps at the at the sink. Yeah. This massive, massive effort to deny the body and what goes on in there and the fact that you know um we are doing body things in there and and boy you better not have any kind of sign that you that you are and i thought my god what if you have to you know what if you have to th uh, throw up or or right. have a bad have you know have a bad lunch or you know or you know how you're on your period you need to change yeah you need to change yeah yourself. and then yeah and I, and I thought, you know, or, or what if something fell out or you know, fell off? Right. And then I went back into, uh, into one of the classrooms and their, their crayons were, uh, were labeled with things like red, blue, green, and skin. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, get, I get it. I understand. I, right. I it was like, oh, that's horrifying. It's, skin it's a skin full of skin. And that pretty much was the genesis of that of that story. Right oh, there. my God. I love that story because, A, I think it's hilarious that you had an idea for a horror story in an elementary <laughs> school. In an elementary school bathroom. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and secondly, I've never thought about it that way. But now that you're thinking of, and, tell, and I'm thinking about it after you talked about it, it's true that like these are natural bodily functions and we're so, I, I mean, I personally, well, we were just on a vacation and we had to fly five hours home and I was paranoid that I would have to go use the restroom on the plane. Like I just, there's just too many people in a short space. And I thought if you really have to do something that isn't, you know, <laughs> I hear you. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you, if it's like in any way, like the way that poop smells or sounds and there's at least like 10 people sitting right in the vicinity of where you are, that to me is more terrifying than, you know, volunteering to have my pinky cut off or something, you know, <laughs> like people talk about public speaking being one of the three horrors. Well, I think that public shitting on the plane is one of the worst oh. things you can do. And I'm always worried when I flush that I'm going to get that. My butt is going to get sucked out the plane. I realize that that's not really how it works. I'm not I know, me too. It's not, not, it's not, it's not rational, but <laughs> it is possible. It, it, it just makes that decisive, you know, yeah. and you think, my God. <laughs> um, but if, if you, by the way, if you are, um, if you are concerned about, um, uh, concerned about that, I have a, a story. I, I, I asked if I could, uh, could, could publicize it. So it's, so it's okay. But I have a story coming up in, uh, in nightmare. Yeah. That maybe you shouldn't read because there is a scene that does take place in an outhouse and it's it it things things end badly things are things are bad in there so i'm just how do you know seriously this is an honest question how do you know these things that terrify me like every <laughs> single time you write a story i it like directly correlates to a horrible fear that i have I how is this possible i think it's all i guess i have them too <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's the worst like just you saying an outhouse makes me think of that X-Files episode where there's the worm that lives inside of the porta potty Have you seen that one? I don't know if I, that's not, I'm writing it down right now. I will find this. You, I, okay, you have to. It's in the early X-Files episodes. It's I'm, probably in the first season, if not the second. Okay, and it, it, it has terrified me from using a, a public restroom, like a, a portable toilet. So the guy who cleans the toilets and hooks it up with like a big hose is like draining it. And this giant form comes out into the tube and he realizes that he has sucked something. It's literally a white Do You know, those Poclossomus fish that suck onto the side of like a fish tank. 
That's horrifying. I'm <laughs> imagining something that looks like a blobfish in my head, but I because it's I like human sized. That's human shaped. I you have to watch it. <laughs> it, will, it will scar you for life. You'll never use a porta potty again. Anyone listening to this, if you are a construction worker who relies on using the porta potty, I, I'm so sorry, but you <laughs> will never use one again. And I, I, you know, I've hiked, I'm, I'm hiking, uh, I've hiked the Appalachian Trail and I'm going to be hiking it again this, uh, this summer and a lot. And, and thankfully a lot of, you know, a, a lot of the outhouses are, are very, very nicely kept. Yeah. All them are. And, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, when you have to, you have to. So. You, you, yeah, and I have had to bunch a bunch of times pit toilets at campsites. You know, I try to like bring a phone and kind of scan the area if it's dark, just to make sure there's not like giant spiders who are gonna like <laughs> bite my butt or something while I'm in there. <laughs> really, you're gonna please, please, please avoid then the the nightmare story. <laughs> oh, no, I will read it because that's how I am. <laughs> that's how I am. Like, that's what I do. I, I am terrified of everything and I want to read about it. <laughs> well, um, you know, both, both, I don't know, fortunately, unfortunately, it, that, that too is partly based on something that actually happened, which I, I guess probably makes it worse. All things considered. Oh God. Now I just can't wait. Well, do you know when that's coming out? I am not 100% sure. I think it's, uh, I'd have to check. I think it's coming out fairly soon. Um, it's called uh, 10,000 Crawling Children. Oh, no. <laughs> and this is Nightmare Magazine, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we might be in the same issue, maybe. Oh, awesome. Yeah, because um, a Gordon B. White actually interviewed me for Nightmare. So oh, and I, it should be in like an upcoming issue. I'm not entirely sure, but. Well, I'm really looking forward to it, and you know, and and it's it's horrifying. So, oh. I would definitely take that X Files recommendation. Is it worse than that one about um, uh, about that uh, that family that is, uh, you, let's say, very very uh, insulated? In yes, I know exactly which one you're talking about. No, that one is the most memorable for me, but this is the second most memorable. For okay, me. okay, yeah, I love yeah, it. this is their they're right there in tandem with each other in terms of like <laughs> permanency in my brain. <laughs> um, so I just want to thank you so much for sitting down with me and having this interview. Um, I think it's super cool that we, all of us, the six authors here and Joe at Cemetery Gates, like we did a thing, you know, we had an idea we did a thing, we put it together, we put it out in the world, readers are reading it, and the rest is going to be history for the rest of all time. Like, they're here, they're in physical form, and your book, Corporate Body, just came out on, I think it was Tuesday, right? Yeah. So pick this up, um, just make sure that your tummy isn't full of lunch foods, <laughs> because you might end up looking at them again after you've already swallowed them. Um and yeah, well, you're the horror queen. Well, thank you so much. You're 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 super kind, and I've loved every single book in this amazing series. And I, you know, I can't recommend them highly enough. And you folks are amazing. Thank you, and thank you for submitting to the call. Oh, uh, I was you. just so thrilled to see your name in the submission. So. Thanks again for joining me. I'm going to go ahead and end this broadcast, but you just hang tight so that I can say goodbye. You bet. And thanks everyone for watching.